<laughs> but I, we bought me and my husband. We've been going to tax um, tax sales for five years, what? and we go south because that's where he's from. My husband's from Forsyth, Georgia, mm-hmm. and it's easier to get deals outside of the city of Atlanta. So you and he. His high school friends and all that, they work for the city down there. So mm. we get the list, we go through the list, and we we buy land and we buy deals. Or we'll buy like a trailer, but the thing is not about the trailer. It's about having the land and knowing that it already has what connected power, a water source, things mm. that you don't have to go in, in infrastructure. You can yeah. just tear down the trailer and build up, which is what we did on um, one of the first properties we built. It was a trailer there, but it was easy to navigate because all the connections were already there. Give me some numbers on this this deal. The land itself cost us Mm $7,500 to build the property. And where was it at? It was in Forsyth, Georgia. Okay. Um, Cost us $7,500. We got it at a tax sale. And that was the tax sale. We closed that in 2017. Okay. Um, And so after we got the land, we waited like a couple years and we started to build on it. We built on it three years ago. Um, It took us about $60,000, $65,000, give or take, to build the property. We sold it for $204,000. Oh, wow. Dang. You don't get none of that in Atlanta? I can say... You can. Atlanta has deals, but when you're starting out, start small. Because now that mm. we've started small, now I feel like I'm confident enough sure. to do a big deal because the cost of land costs much more. But the returns are greater in Atlanta too. So if you see some land in Atlanta, it's going to cost you maybe three hundred thousand in the city of Atlanta. But if you get the land for three hundred thousand, you have the right builders, the right suppliers, the right connectors. You can build the house for three hundred thousand, and then you can sell the house for one point four million. What? And you can make your money back. See, that's the point. That's why I. At this point in my career, I'm still selling. But like I said, I don't know how long because I'm really loving the development side. Mm. You take a bigger risk because what you're risking as a developer is, am I building a product that five months from now when it's done, let's just say on average, really six months from now when the property is done, are we going to be in a market where they're going to pay this purchase price I need them to pay in order for me to make my profit? Welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast, where we find dope people that did dope stuff. Today's no different. I've been watching this young lady build for a while now, and she's one of those people that everybody knows. And for a while, I'm like, I'll see you, and I'm like, why don't I know her? It seems like everybody knows her. She's around everybody, and everybody's posting her. I'm like, yo, who is this woman? Today we have Kiana Watson. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. How are you? Oh, I'm great. I am great, man. I'm, I'm excited about this conversation, especially for the time that we're in right now, because you understand a lot about real estate. Absolutely. A lot about entrepreneurship. But you are not an agent. You are a broker. Right. Right? So can you explain the difference? Sure. Let me give you guys a difference, because most people kind of get it confused. So... When you are a real estate agent, you have to hang your license with a broker. Mm -hmm. So you can't just sell. You can get your license. You have to. So for me, I'm the broker owner. So Mm -hmm. there are agents that have to have their license somewhere. So they house their license with me. Mm -hmm. And essentially what people don't recognize is when they write the contract, you are an agent. And that is technically not your contract. That contract belongs to the broker. Hold on. on. As an agent, hold on. Because I have my license before. And I'm like, when I go get a contract... I signed a contract. I didn't do that well, but <laughs> I didn't do that good. Um, but so when I sign a contract with, like, say somebody wants to buy a house right. or sell a house, they're not signing a contract with me. It's with the broker. Absolutely. It is with the broker. And we are essentially responsible for the compliance. We're responsible. If they want to sue anybody on this contract, they're not suing you as the agent. They're going what? to sue the broker because we're the ones that actually are responsible for the entire mm. transaction. So let's just say, and this is, this hasn't happened to me, but let's just say mm. you write a contract and you're like, I like it over here at Watson Realty Co, but I, I want to leave and I want to take my contract with me. I don't have to give it to you. It's mine. I can pay you your split, but mm. that contract belongs to Watson Realty Co. Oh, wow. So that's what most people don't recognize. So that's the biggest difference between being an agent. You're responsible for yourself. The minute you become a broker, you're responsible for how many of how many other people hang their license with you. Mm -hmm. And it's a huge responsibility because people get sued every day, B. (laughs) (laughs) Clearly. Yo, so give me some successes. Like what is like, how big is your firm? We are right at 34 agents today. And I can tell you, I always wanted to be one of those firms that were tiny, but mighty. I could have a hundred agents if I wanted to. The reason I moved that way, because my agents are actually producing. So Mm. I don't want to have a hundred agents and only 20 people are closing deals. 
I have 30 agents and 30 agents are closing deals. And that mm. makes a big difference in my recruiting process and my thought process about how I'm managing my structure of the business. Mm. How much real estate y'all selling? Right now, I'm t the goal this year is 100 million. We are already at 80 million. What? What? Yes. 80 million already closed deals. And uh, by the end of the year, I know we're surpassed 100 million because I'm watching the contracts and I see the deals coming through. What about last year? So last year we were only at six agents. I just opened. I just opened the doors this year. Wow. So at six agents last year. We actually still closed sixty-two million dollars. What with state. six agents? With six agents. I mean, I'm still a producing agent. I closed twenty-two million by myself. Come on, you better talk that talk. <laughs> like, you better talk that I, talk. I, I, here, close that, I close that by myself, and I do that consistently. I've been doing that for the last three years. Even in this space I am now, with everything I'm doing, I'm on track to close twenty million individually in real estate by myself. Oh my gosh. Okay. 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 So what what is a what does a normal agent do? Like first year, what's like the first expectation? Your first expectation in your first year is you're gonna have to pay to play. There are so many people getting this business, you think I'm just gonna be great. I'm gonna take that picture like mm. Kiana, I'm gonna post it on Instagram, <laughs> boom, I'm gonna blow up. That right. is not how it, it works. Work that way. Your first year, I would recommend you join a team. And if you're just gonna be out in the trenches, you need to take that time to learn what you're doing, mm -hmm. understand the process, and go for what we like to call is going to be the easier deals, which are gonna be the lower cost deals, first time home buyers. But that's how you're gonna learn. Because mm. by the time you're closing multi million dollar deals, you can't learn on those deals. You're gonna have to be 100% in it to win it because it's so much more to lose. Um, so mm. I would say your first year, you're going to use learning. Yeah. You're going to be, you're going to be somebody's admin. You're going to be mm. out in the field. You're going to be opening doors for a top producing agent. You're going to have to help somebody so you can help yourself, get you a mentor. And then by the time you learn what you're doing, get your back end together. Mm. There are so many people like you start off with one. Oh, I can manage these clients in my cell phone. That's cool. When you got five clients, I've serviced over 250 people. They can't stand my cell phone. Hey. You need a database. And so, but start off with a database. Mm. I made that mistake when I first got like started popping. I'm like, I can manage this on my mm. phone. And then I had to pay, I paid somebody like $3,000 to fix my database when I recognized this is messed up. Yeah. Like, have you ever went to get your teeth done like at a, a dentist appointment, right? And they send you happy birthday in your email, mm. get the card. Yep. That's your database. They're not doing that physically. You know that, right? <laughs> right, right it's right. a machine. <laughs> and right. so it's the same thing like real estate. It's a machine. And if you run it like a business, you'll last. So gotcha. your first year set the foundation because when you're busy, you're going to be too busy to set the foundation. Mm. How much should I, ex well, on, on average, first year as an agent, like how much real estate you think I should sell? Is it a million, two mm. million? My expectation is that I'm going to tell you, you're, two, about two million in real estate would be fair in your first year mm -hmm. um, because you're still learning and people still have to trust you and you have to kind of get your confidence up and your knowledge up. About two million, two point five million would be a good year for a first year agent. Mm. And the average is like three percent, right? Absolutely. So the average is three percent. So three percent of a million is what? Three thousand? Thirty thousand? Thirty thousand. So you're gonna make about if, after you pay your broker. So you gotta your, bro your broker your broker gonna take some money. I think that y'all forget, like we calculate all this money, but if you're on a team, they probably taking thirty percent. Your broker gonna take their twenty percent. Like everybody, get, everybody eats first, and then you get your split. I ain't in your, I ain't in your business, Kiana. But, but I, mean, I know, I know. Please don't. Twenty two get million. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. And that's like, so you have your own. You still produce your own, and then as a broker, you're helping other people. So you get yeah, a I little get, piece get, off of I, that. Of course, so this is how it works. You know, and. and Shout out to the agents of Watson Realty Co. Mm. Let me say that. But there's this how it works. Of course, I get I get a piece of everything they close because mm. I'm setting the foundation for their closings. I'm available for broker support. When they come to the company, the backend systems are in place. The CRM is in place. The templates are in place. Your processes are in place. Your backend design center is in place. You can kind of come and plug and play. And for mm. that, there's a compensation. And for that time mm. of helping you manage deals, helping you through your first deal, or helping you through uh, your first multi-million dollar deal, I'm, go I'm going to get my fee. I ain't mad at that. <laughs> I mean, I, I, obviously, for sure, like, if you're, like, not only just facilitating, but I'm sure there's a, a mentorship aspect and all that kind I, of stuff. It's a mentorship yeah. aspect. And, and the difference between me and other brokerages, it's a it is a exposure aspect. Mm -hmm. You know, Watts Realty Co., we have our own dedicated social media page. In that page, we highlight every single one of our agents. And people go over there and they choose. Yeah. Other brokers, they don't really do that. 
And so you're getting the social aspect of it. So when I make a big announcement about Watson Realty Co. and work with one of my agents, there are two of my agents. One of my agents, she's uh, an associate agent on the team. Mm. And I was like telling everyone, just go support us, go What's support associate us. What's associate agent? So an associate agent is uh, on a team of a principal agent. My principal mm. agents, I have 14 of those. Those yeah. are the ones that are my heavy hitters. I know they're going to close 10 million plus a year. What? They all they all are like they all the minimum I think on my probably like seven million in a year. But the my I have those are my heavy hitters. And then from there, they bring team members underneath them, which are our associate agents. They, they have to come under a team. Right. So when you come under a team, what that does for me is I have most of my trainings and most of my mentorship directly with the principal agents. But every month I train everybody yeah. and the door is open. But it makes it easier for me because now, like, I'm, I'm not going to in a space where I can teach you how to write your first contract. Join a team for that. But I am in a space like, Keanu, I got my first multi-million deal. All right, now you you experience. Let me mm-hmm. give you some real game. Um, let me show you how to structure your business. Let me show you how to build a team. So most of the agents that come to me, I'm teaching them how to build a team because they see I've successfully done it. Mm-hmm. And they are, like, really successful in building teams and encouraging them. We, we don't have a revolving door. People come and they stay. Yeah. It's a reason for that. Why do they pick you like uh, Watson Realty versus Keller Williams or okay. Metro Brokers? Like, why do you think those people say, "Yo, I want to rock with her"? I feel like it's because I, I I come from a place of this is what I'm actually doing. Mm-hmm. See, have you have anybody seen Keller Williams in the streets closing houses? Exactly. No. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. Your science, yeah. Exactly. So, but when you come over here, it's like I know that I've watched Kiana build this business. I see she closes deals. Yeah. She's still out here with us a little bit. Like I'm even still, I'm closing at a high level. I can tell you what's going on right now today. And our market from today, from last year has shifted. I can train them because I'm also doing it. And you're in the streets, yeah. Exactly. So it's really about knowing that you're with a a company that wants to see you win. And I'm not training you from an old concept. I'm training you from what's conceptual and what's actually happening today. I was saying, I was actually thinking about like renewing my license. Come on. We need you. Really? Yes. Do I? I be doing a lot though. I know you do a lot. That's the problem. But can I still get the bag though? Can <laughs> Let me I? tell you, this is the craziest thing, and I say this to myself. And I was just like, I did a, I did a whole like um, live last night about it, like getting caught up in the hype. I feel like for me sometimes, and I'm like a guilty of this. Like this is a transparent moment. Like this is safe space, right? Oh yeah, for sure. No I judgment. Feel like people like you get caught up in the hype. It's like that's Kiana Watson. She dresses nice. Her and her husband. She drive a fly car. She do all this. And you're speaking on panels and, you know, we're at Invest Fest in front of 14,000 people. You are lit, people. girl. And if you're about to say you're not lit, you're lying. No, I'm you, not uh, saying I'm not okay. lit. But you're in front of 14,000 people, you know what I mean? You're interviewing, you're doing all this stuff. People taking pictures of you. But at the end of the day, when that event is over and that thing is done, Monday comes. And what is the core of what you do? Who, is you, who are you at the core? I'm Kiana Watson. I run a real estate business and the core of my business is helping people buy and sell real estate. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to lose that because the minute you lose that, you're getting caught up in the hype. Because that hype, to me, the hype is, um, the hype is a cycle. It's a cycle to the hype. Mm -hmm. You'd be the best thing popping today and then tomorrow. So what is your core? Mm -hmm. And I feel like me saying to that core of, you know what, I can be on this reality TV show. I can speak on this panel. I could do all of this. But at the end of the day, when people call and they want to work with me, I'll pick up the phone. Hey, you're looking to buy, sell a house. They'd be shocked. Oh my God, I'm talking to Kiana. Well, this is the core of my business. And I'm not sure what place I'm going to get when I start kind of getting out of that. But as a reminder to myself, Watson Road to Co is only two years old. Mm. So we just hit our two year anniversary um, last month. Thank you. So I want a five year run before I can say it's time for me to hang up the hat. Who knows how this whole social media I'm lit today, yeah. gonna work. So I just stick to my core and I let everything else be extra. That's dope. All right. So I think I might. I think I might get my because one, I'm just interested in buying real estate myself. And I, I feel like I feel like if I had my license, I'd have more tools and I would understand real estate a little more. You would. You'll have a better understanding. And then let's just I tell people this all the time. There are some people that's never gonna want to do this job. But if mm-hmm. you're buying and selling real estate consistently. Why not get your license and represent yourself? Mm -hmm. Get a better understanding of the market. Get a better understanding of running comps, what to expect. Um, You don't have to wait for someone to open the door. You want to see something, you can go see it yourself. You have the license to do so. So that's the deal. Like, I think it's an amazing industry. I encourage everybody to get their real estate license. Even Mm -hmm. on, think about it, even on a part-time basis. If you have a full-time job and you help five people and you close, let's say, 
three million in real estate, you you gonna make you gonna make you a, a nice little ex side hustle income. Absolutely, and it's good. Like the the average house is if you you say three hundred thousand dollar house, right? You are gonna make nine thousand dollars. Now, okay, give a, give or take your fees, you got to give mm. out. But let's just say you do that four times. You could bring an extra, you know. Let's bring. Let's talk about it. Sure, indeed. It, it make and that's not even. Let's, that's not even the average price point in Atlanta right now. And I could put in my own lowball offers without my agent judging me. Because and we do judge. <laughs> we, let me tell you, we judge. Uh, we judge because it's, it's time. A million dollars we, off from seven fifty. <laughs> we and know then, it's not gonna work. <laughs> we know it's not gonna work, and then we be like, man, they wasting our time. Like we're real convinced. But sometimes, not sometimes. So baby. it works sometimes. Who said that? So, no, yo, shout, yo, shout out to Terika. I've seen her do some amazing things. But that's because she believed in it, though. True. I'm, like, when you run the numbers, if the numbers, mm. like, I'm a numbers person. Like, mm. I've taken appraisal classes. Like, I, I actually, like, I got software that appraisers use. Like, that's how deep I am oh, into dang. knowing that. Knowing, I want to know. Mm. Like, I need to know. And so, if it makes sense, I'm a lowballer. Right. But if it does, it makes sense. And I'm showing you these data. We're just not going to waste time. Gotcha. You didn't yeah, hire me to waste your time. Right. I might do it the one time just to prove to you wrong. But after that, we got to we got to get back on track. Yeah. Do you get a lot of people to do low, low ball offers? Though? Especially Today, investors. Let me tell you right now, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, y'all think y'all could get a $2 million house for $500,000. It's recession, like, baby. Come on. Put like, in the offer, Kiana. It's not. Throw it <laughs> we are not in that type of recession. It lasts. Atlanta is not there. Like that is not what's happening. Like, like that is not what I can tell you. And I and I'm even wanting to say our industry for the last two years was insane. Like mm. a lot of us were just overworked. Mm. It was so many people losing offers back to back. People were clo- closing in over fifty thousand, mm. paying over fifty thousand over asking price, yeah, thirty thousand over asking price just to win the offer. Mm. That has slowed down, and I'm actually mm. glad it has because it was so. It was just brutal. It yeah. was brutal for the buyers. The sellers came up yeah, for during sure. that time. 100%. But now when they're like, oh, we're in a recession, I'm like, well, how are we in a recession? We still have, if you have inventory, we still only have less than two months of inventory on the market. Just ran the numbers What does yesterday. that mean? So when you have inventory on the market, this is what tells you if it's a buyer's market or a seller's market. Six months of inventory is considered to be more of a neutral market. That's a win-win for everybody. But what, is, what does six months of inventory mean? That's houses on the market. So six months of houses on the market that can actually supply the demand. So the at, so if, if I list a house today, the, I won't expect this house to sell for six months, meaning it's no, no, been on the market six months? No, no, what we're talking about is the number of houses. So the last, let's just say, there are 10,000 houses on the market, but there are 20,000 people looking for houses. Mm. Then you're not, we don't have enough supply to meet the demand. Right. But if there are 10,000 houses on the market and there are 10,000 people that they look in the data and looking, then now we're in a neutral market. But if you have 10,000 houses on the market and there are 40,000 people still actively approved looking for houses, you're in a seller's market. There's not enough inventory Got it. to satisfy the supply. It's a supply and demand. And if there's forty, if there's forty thousand houses on the market, but only ten thousand active buyers. Oh, now you're in a buyer's market. Buyer's market. But how do we how do we measure the the months? Like six months, five months. What so the mean? way they're measured is we're looking at the number of inventory, and then they go back to the data and look at how many people they've pulled that are approved for mortgages. Mm. And so when they look at this data, they come up with that number, and it comes out every month to real estate agents. Got which is it. why. You may want to get your license. Oh, okay, <laughs> so gotcha, it comes gotcha. out every month. So I looked at the data and we have 1.9 months of inventory. Yeah. It's not enough. Gotcha. Okay, so what were you doing before you were fabulous? You may be a fabulous back then. You're super <laughs> fabulous now. Like that is a word I, that you would describe. <laughs> Look on a page, you would describe fat. Scroll up. Scroll up. Go up. You'll see, like, all the way to the top. All the way to the top. You're gonna to see fabulous. All the way to the top. All the way to the top. The, the top fabulous. <laughs> Fabulous, right? Yo, you got like this is like you are lit. You go to your Instagram, the way you market, I think is really, really dope. But like, what were you doing before all this? So before everything, I was a property manager. Mm. So my first official job in the Metro Atlanta area was managing multifamily housing. The loud largest community I was at was 415. Um, you are managing managing properties, like, meaning, a man, like an apartment. So you work for an apartment complex. Oh, apartment community. Mm-hmm. Work for an apartment How complex. How long was this? So that was 2015. I started doing that in 2009 when the market crashed, like started to switch switch up. Yeah. 2009 to 2015, I was in property management. Mm, how old were you then? Like when you first started in 2009? How old was I? Yeah. I think 
Okay, let me tell you. I moved to Atlanta. So I got thick? I got I gotta think. Oh I gotta think. I moved to Atlanta oh, I, like, I, I gotta think. I was moved to Atlanta in two thousand and six. And I got my real estate license two thousand seven. I wanna say I was twenty seven, something like that. Got it. And then twenty six, twenty seven. Right. I gotta count I'll I'll run the numbers back, y'all. The the, right. the the years have been running. But I did that from twenty um two thousand nine into two thousand fifteen. Mm-hmm. They sold my last apartment community in twenty fifteen. Oh wow. And so when they sold it, I had the option to get my severance pay or I could literally like jump out into real estate. I had kind of mm-hmm. reactivated my license, went part time. I'm sorry, did you have care. your license while you were doing property management? Yes. Mm-hmm. I had my license since 2007. But you didn't need your license to be a property manager. No, but I got my license to be in real estate. I flopped I like most people flop because I thought, hey, I'm going to go to the office, wear this suit. They're going to call, like, right. they going to call me. Y'all, I know I'm going to sell some right. real estate. And it was like a big flop because I didn't know what I was doing. Didn't have a mentor. I really didn't take it seriously at the time. You know, yeah. my my life in Atlanta was very different. If y'all remember those times, <laughs> it was very different when I first Do got so. here. <laughs> what, what year is this? Be coming out in the book. Okay, <laughs> I do have, but this 2006, and so that time was, you know, a lot oh, of just the BMF and all the stuff that was going on in Atlanta. And right. my ex at the time, he owned a nightclub, and which one? It was South Beach on Roswell Road. I think I remember. Yeah. yeah. So he owned South Beach on Roswell Road, and um, so I got my license, but not really, because I mean, at the end of the day, I didn't really need it. He was mm. kind of taking care of everything. Yeah. But that was when everything happened. That's when I watched. This is another reason I take my business so seriously. Um, Because even though he helped me get my real estate license and I was just kind of living that life Mm. at the time, just floating around, um, I came to Atlanta by myself. Mm. And so I did have a job and I got with him and then it was like, you don't need your job. And I'm like, yeah, okay. I'm going to ride this out. Was that the property manager job? No, before. Let me tell you, this is before property management. Okay, where was you working? So I was working at Reconstruction Data. It was mm. a marketing company, and they're still around today. It's mm. on Peachtree Industrial Road, and I worked there. It was like, and I thought it was like going to be this marketing gig, but it literally was me sitting in a call center. I'm mm. like, this is BS. And so <laughs> when my um, they had this Black Men's Magazine, y'all remember Black Men Magazine? Yeah. So, yep. Modeling competition at South Beach, mm. and my friends was like, "Kiana, you should go. You should go." And I'm like, "Okay," because at that time I was so paranoid to be in Atlanta by myself. I would just go to work, come home, go to Publix, make me some food. Like I was so paranoid because I was here alone. Mm. I finally went to that that competition, met some amazing people, met all these women, and ended up meeting my ex at the time. Oh wow! So we started dating from there, and when we started dating, it was kind of like, "Oh, you need this job. You can be with me all day." And you're like, okay. I was fine. Don't was, fast forward me, Kiana. Don't okay. fast forward I'm not me. Don't fast forward. So he's like, you don't need this job. You can be with me. And so, you know, we we end up like being together and it was going well. And I'm watching him do all, run all these businesses. But at the same time, I'm not that involved. I'm kind of like minding my business. Mm. I know what's a lot going on. I know we're in this big old house in Roswell. I know your business partners. Like, it was to the point, his business partners, everybody had a big house. Like, it was like in one quarter. Oh, wow. His house with the gate, his next door neighbor was his other business that's, partner. That's like, goals. It was, it, that was, this was, now, this was 2007. Like, this is before Keanu Watson, the real estate professional. Yeah. Right? And we were taking, you know, flights to LA, like, just living. I'm well, a truck queen. Huh? Was you a trap queen? I was not a trap queen. Okay. Let me tell you, let me let me break this down, y'all, okay. what really happened. <laughs> he was really a businessman, but he learned a lot about blue collar and how to do, I would like to call blue collar crime. So mm. we were coming back from LA and we knew it was, he was kind of telling me about a little bit about it. But again, I was kind of like, oh, like just loopy around. round. Mm. When we came back, um, they raided the, the house in Roswell. <laughs> the feds raided the house in Roswell and uh, essentially... They charged him with straw borrowing. And let me tell you guys what straw borrowing is because you don't want to get caught up doing that. So he never had a real estate license. However, if you guys remember the West End Atlanta before it became what it is today, Mm -hmm. back then when they would do appraisals and comps, they would comp the appraisals properties based on the map. No one actually had to physically go out. And so there would be these $10,000 houses that they were appraised or comp at a half million, 400,000 because of the proximity to Atlanta. And they would, he would straw borrow. So come to find out, I wasn't the only one. He would find these women with great credit scores and he would get these women to finance these properties in their names. And what they would do is they would finance the properties and pull out a second mortgage at the same time and pull out, let's just say you pull out $200,000. He gets half the money, you keep half the money 
and he tells you, hey, I'm going to put a renter into this property. And I'm saying this allegedly because I want to say this again. This is allegedly what happened. This is a real case that took Mm. place with the federal government. Mm. So come to find out now, all of a sudden, there's all these properties that are being abandoned because one, we couldn't, they didn't get a renter in them. He walked away with his money, allegedly. And the person that financed it, now you're stuck with the house. Wow. And what, what, did you, what do you do when you first get your first 100000 and you don't know what you're going to do? Go crazy. Go crazy. They done, went, they done bought all the Chanel bags. Yeah. You know what I mean? And not realizing you have to still pay this mortgage. And so that's a scenario of what actually took place. Oh and um, it was him. It was another loan officer that was involved in another appraiser, which this is what changed how they process, process loans. Mm. So essentially, um, he, went through, he went through trial. He was in um, the holding facility off um, in Fayetteville mm-hmm. for quite some time. And um, he ended up getting sentenced to 10 years in prison. Oh, wow. Him and all his business partners got 10 years in prison for uh, mortgage fraud and straw borrowing. And that Damn. is when I had to make a decision because I was like, okay, you're smart. One thing about it, I, I've always kind of been fabulous. So I've always kind of <laughs> had people that men that didn't mind. I was very easy on their eyes. Let's say that. And uh, But I had to make a decision because I'm like, now he's in jail and he goes to jail and, you know, I'm here. Mm. And now, although he may or may not have still had some funds to assist me, I'm like, okay, I need to get to reality because mm. either I'm going to get it together or I'm going to have to move back to North Carolina. And I'm damn sure not moving yeah. back to North Carolina because I'm smarter than this. Like at this point, I'm really telling myself, like, you are smarter than this. Like, why are you putting yourself in this position? And I went to work. I literally got back, put my resume back out there, and I got into property management because I knew that this is like, this is it. Like, I never, from that moment, I stopped saying I wanted to have a man take care of me. And now I've been in that space from growing up in North Carolina, growing up in the projects. Like, I always had, you know, a, a, a male partner that had some money <laughs> and that didn't mind spending some money on me mm. is never I've never not had that right mm. but then after that incident it just taught me so much because I'm like I'm this close to having to go back to North Carolina and I don't want to move back because mm. there's nothing there I came here for entrepreneurship I came here to just be great and here I am just allowing myself to get caught up mm. so when he got sentenced I was like it just a light bulb clicked a light bulb clicked and I just became laser focused on my professional development. I was not hanging out like I was. I like nobody from people that used to, that knew me back from there. Mm-hmm. Like I kind of just disappeared on all of them yeah. and just got to work. I got busy and got focused on doing the internal work and like being the boss of Kiana. Yeah. Like I just never wanted someone to be able to slip my life from under my feet like that again. All right, listen, every single week, every episode, you hear me talking about the morningmeetup.com. It's the community. Let me show you what's happening here. Every single morning, Monday through Friday, there's 400 plus people on a Zoom call, right? We're learning, we're talking, we're growing together, and this is you. There's all these people here. It's all these people in the morning meetup, hundreds of people reading books, growing. We get together quarterly. It's amazing. And for some reason, you just keep looking at, just go to themorningmeetup.com and get in the circle. And then you'll be like way happier. Just themorningmeetup.com. Let's get back to the episode. Uh, what, what, what made you, because I know you said you moved from North Carolina, what part of North Carolina? Fayetteville, North Carolina. Fayetteville. To Atlanta. What were you doing there that said, I got to get out of here? Nothing. I literally got my, I got my, um, I went to Fayetteville State University mm-hmm. and got my undergrad degree. And when I got my undergrad degree, what did they tell you? You're going to get this fabulous job. Mm-hmm. Here I am working at AT&T call center again. Damn. So I'm like, oh, man, I think I'm about to have this great job. I'm working at the call center, mm-hmm. working at the call center, selling um, phone services and upgrading people's uh, <laughs> wireless internet. <laughs> right, right. And I'm like, all right, this is not it. But at the time I, you know, had a boyfriend at the time when I was in North Carolina and mm-hmm. we would always come to Atlanta. And, you know, when they used to have P. Diddy Weekend, Luna mm-hmm. Day Weekend, I was like, these black people are yeah. fab- These black people are fabulous. Right. And I just knew, I'm like, I need to move. I think Buckhead was still Buckhead. Buckhead was still Buckhead. Yeah, like, Buckhead you could was still Buckhead. And, yeah. and all the clubs and all yeah. the bars. Like, you know, I've been, so I'm like, yeah, this is where I'm going to move. Yeah. So I just made my mind up how I ended up moving to Atlanta as I saved as much money as I could. I knew my boyfriend at the time and 
North Carolina was not going to work because he was a hustler and it just wasn't going to work. I mm-hmm. knew it wasn't going to work for the long term goals I had mm-hmm. for my life. So I saved as much money as I could and I drove here by myself, got me an apartment in Sandy Springs, like to the point I woke up, drove here from North Carolina, six hour drive, got the apartment, drove back to North Carolina the same day. Went back to work for like two, three weeks until my apartment was ready. And then then my dad and my brothers moved me to Atlanta uh, about a month after that. Amazing. Like I knew I I just, what what happened is I kept, I always feel like in my life and I I mean, I'm, my family, like we grew up in church. Like I had to go to church every Sunday, Bible study and all that stuff. And I just spiritually, I feel like my grandma has always like, there was just like a layer of protection and favor that she's always Mm. had over me. And I always know when it's time to go. For some reason in my life, I always know when it's time to go. And I knew it was time to leave North Carolina, and I left. I knew it was time to bet on myself when my ex went to jail. I knew, like, I just always know when it's time to unveil a new layer of myself. Yeah, for you sure. Know? I, I want to know, because there are, like, maybe there's some women listening to this or somebody that knows a, a, a woman that's in that perspective or, or in that life where they're just letting someone take care of them. Right. Did you feel anything was wrong with it while it's happening? Or was it just kind of like, oh, this is lit. This is what I want out of life. I'm going to tell you, you know, in your spirit, you know, something is wrong, but you just live in because it's so comfortable. It's so easy to wake up with. You don't have to do nothing, but just be pretty and be available and be around like you don't have no real responsibilities, but you know, it's not right. Mm. And I think that the person that's in that space, especially where we are now, like it's no longer, I feel like back in my time, like I'm, you know, I'm 41 today. Are you really? I'll, I'll be 41 in October 12th, really. So, no way. No, I'm 40 now. So I'm a grown, wow. grown, seasoned woman, right? And so when you think about it from that perspective, it's different today. Today you have representation on social media, people like me, people like so many other women that I know that are entrepreneurs that are lit, that can get that secure their own money, but be soft enough to maintain a marriage and keep yeah. a relationship. Back in that time, all we saw and what we had access to was the Smooth Magazine, Black Men's mm-hmm. Magazine, and there wasn't so much representation of women in business. Yeah. It was only representation of women being taken For care sure. of. So we became products of that environment. So mm-hmm. now that we're growing beyond it, and now we have more access, I, I encourage women, don't allow yourself to be in that space. It's mm-hmm. one thing if you're married and y'all make that decision together. That's your, that's your decision, your marriage. Mm-hmm. But if you are dating, simply dating, I highly, I highly recommend you have your own business about yourself. Yeah. Or obviously take that opportunity because I, I would imagine that in certain scenarios, a, a the, the, whoever is, I mean, I don't use the word sponsor, but yeah. the person who is that sponsor, they'll support your dream. Absolutely. And that's the thing. Like, don't buy me a bag. Like, they, they, give they me my license. They will support your dream. Yeah. Even my ex at the time here, he I just he wanted to support my dream. He actually paid for me to get my real estate license. Damn. He was supporting a dream, but then I was just too comfortable. I would literally get dressed up and go to the real estate office. And this is a tip. There is no money for you in the real estate office. I'm telling you right now, if you a real estate agent, new agent, and you think every day I'm going to get up and get dressed and go to the office, what's there? Another A bunch of another agent. <laughs> Why are you there every day? Yeah, You're sure. in the wrong place. You need to be somewhere scouting for people. Open your laptop at a Starbucks. Talk about real estate on the phone if there's nobody on the other end. Gate, like You don't need to be around a bunch of agents because y'all are not going to make any money with each other because you're supposed to do the same thing. I didn't recognize that, so I thought getting dressed up every day, going to my office, I was just like, listen, I'm dressed. We're we're thinking somebody's going (laughs) to knock on the door and say, hey, I want a $2 million house. Who's here? Right. And and, and, and a a part of that was I was just comfortable. I was Mm. comfortable getting taken care of, taking these trips, buying what I want, doing what I want. And it was like, oh, I got my real estate license, but it wasn't wasn't no focus behind it, no purpose behind it. And I, and I feel like everything happens for a reason. I yeah. needed to kind of get knocked off, knocked down a little bit. Because yeah. when he went to jail, it was like a little bit of a knockdown. Like, oh, okay. I'm no longer in Roswell. I'm in this little apartment. Like, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm no longer in this mansion. Mm-hmm. I'm in this little apartment. And I was driving like a Range Rover at the time. They took the Range Rover back. I was Damn. back into my I'm back into my GS little 300, like Lexus 300 that I drove from North Carolina. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I was knocked off my little pedal stone. I'm like, all right. You got to get back to work. Wow. So it it fueled me, and I think this second round, when I when I when I always say there's a new layer, that new layer that came through when it came when I started working in property mm. management, I was ready. I was ready to truly take control of my life, and 
use my brain and allow yeah. myself to grow professionally. For sure. Somebody told me that to be a broker doing what you're doing, that I don't have to have a real estate license. Is that true? You don't have to have a real estate license. You just have to hire a broker that does. So, and for example, like my old company I used to work for, the owner never had a real estate license. Really? No. He just owned the company. He was in the office. He hired and paid a broker a salary to run it. So if I know marketing and branding yeah. and people like me, I can hire a broker. Correct. I can have Shans Realty. Yep. I can hire a broker yes. and I'll just run this just as another business where yes. I just hired somebody to run the business. Exactly. <gasps> you don't have to have a real estate license. Uh -huh. You can literally just say, listen, I'm good at business. I know business structure. I know marketing. If you open up Shans Real Estate and you hire a broker and say, listen, this is the salary plus commission I'm going to pay you. So because you're the actual person, you're the broker in charge. You are the managing broker. So as the managing broker of these contracts, you'll be responsible for. But I'm the business owner. And I'm putting the structure in place. Ooh. That's it. I could, I could partner with somebody who really, you know, it's like people that really know real estate and they're like, they're good in their yes, little pocket. That's, that's what you do. You partner with someone that really knows real estate. They have their broker's license. And now that you, you have your own real estate company. There are a lot of <laughs> huge companies where the owner doesn't have a real estate license. Okay. Teach me how to build this. Okay. Right so, here. Okay. So, so <laughs> one, if you are a broker, and you know all the stuff you know about real, you know it like the back of your hand, you're really good, you service your clients, your clients are happy, but you don't know how to find clients. You don't really know how to find agents. Mm -hmm. Come to Death Row. Come to Death Row. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and listen, come to Death Row Records. Well, we ain't gonna be all dancing in your video. You feel me? Let me tell come you on, something. Man. Social proof real estate firm. Let's Ready. go. Okay. And so, the walk you through it, the first thing you want to do is you're going to find you a managing broker. So you get you a managing broker, you negotiate that salary, and they have to have had their real estate license for at least three years, right? Mm -hmm. Then they, from there, you fill out the application with the commission, the Georgia Real Estate Commission for Atlanta. Fill out the um, application because it's you as the owner and that person as the managing broker. Once they approve it, there are a few things that you're going to have to get in the back end before you launch. One, who is going to handle finance? Because these agents want to get paid their commissions. Mm -hmm. So talk, get you a financing and commission-based like software so you can process it. Secondly, you need to have your processes in place. Like people, when they come to a company, they need to know what you expect from them. So write out your policies and procedures. Get your ICA, which is your independent contractor agreement in place. You need that in place so you can outline what you're offering in exchange for the split. Mm -hmm. Then decide what you want your split to be. Like, you know, my, it depends. Like there are people, mm -hmm. there are companies that do transaction based where they're only going to charge you per transaction. Mm -hmm. There are companies that are going to charge you a split. What is your split? And the split is going to say this. Let me break that down. Real, real quick before I forget this. Do I have to, do I get charged for each, as a broker, do I get charged for each agent that I have? Like, can I have some agents just sitting around and if they don't make no money, nobody makes money or. I'm charging, <laughs> no, I charge a monthly fee. As a company, okay. you're going to charge a monthly fee. For access to your office, access to your back end systems processes. So you're going to get paid a monthly fee, but if they just sitting around, that's all you're going to get. Mm -hmm. So determine what that monthly fee is to see if it's going to help cover your operations, operational expenses, because you don't want to, you know, charge too little. Oh, I got a vision. No, keep you going. Know? Okay. So, so keep going, me. keep going. You're talking about the splits. <laughs> so, so now you have the splits and now it's like, do you want to do an 80, 20 split, 85, 15 split and in, in which they keep 85%, you get 15%. And mm -hmm. at what point will they cap yep. or will they not cap? I was with a company before that never capped. And what is a cap? So that means, Hey, you want to come work for death row records for per year? You got to pay me 25,000. I'm going to get a cut of your commission every single deal until you hit 25,000. Once you hit 25,000, then all I'm getting from you is your monthly fees and it resets mm. every count, it resets every anniversary year. Or there are companies that's like it's an 85-15 split, period. There period. is no cap. I'm going to get paid in infinitely on your deals and that's it. So you decide Which one's worse? Which one's better? Atlanta does it. I can tell you. I like the infinite. I like yeah. the infinite, but I can tell you Atlanta doesn't do well with it. They just don't. No. People, it's, too much, it's too much competition, too many people. Um, you know, black people, we want to keep our money. You know, it's black yeah, excellence. Sure. And so you got to create a structure that is the cap makes sense for the amount of support you're offering. Got it. Okay. Do you do cap or you do infinite? 
I did cap. I did infinite last year. This year I cap. Once I started grab, grabbing more agents, more me, sophisticated me. agents, I oh, cap. Okay. I so, mean that's pretty cool. And because... I like that I cap because it's the way that I got everything structured. I mm. cap out, but at the same time it's a monthly fee, and at the same time there's a fee for my leads as well. So I mean it's fine. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. So the cap is like, yo, once you pay me as a broker thirty thousand in yeah. fees, then. This, this it. That's but, it. Then you can you, just go kill it. But if you guarantee, if you get you 50 agents and you know that 30 of those agents are for sure going to hit your cap because you vet them. Like for me, you can't come to Watson Road to go unless you have closed a minimum of $4 million a year. Because I know if you come here, if you at least close $4 million, I'm going to get you to 7 mm. And that means I know I'm going to get my cap. Gotcha, gotcha. And infinite is, dang, now that you put it like that, infinite seems savage. Infinite but is it like seems a 360 like, deal. It's yeah, like a 360 deal. But I think I did that with, so I when I was with, uh, I was with uh, Metro Brokers, I want to say, at first it was 50-50. But they capped. I was with Metro Brokers at one point. Metro Brokers had a $16,500 per year cap, but they charged 50-50, so they want their money within the first three months. So they're going to charge 50-50 yeah. and get, like, as you close five deals, they're going to get paid within 90 days, they're going to get their 16 five. I think at that point, and the reason it was, I know that I know everybody's cap in Atlanta because I wanted to <laughs> determine it must have changed because I, I don't think there was no cap that, at that now, point. Yeah, yeah. I had my license in 2005, maybe. Oh, uh, maybe they changed it because now I know when I I was with them in 2014 and they did have a $16,500 cap. So, but it depends. I don't know what they have now, but it depends on. What type of service are you going to offer in exchange? Like, what do you feel like your value is? That's what it comes down to. So if you create a, a brokerage and you know you have exposure, you're going to be able to make sure they get leads. You're going to make sure they have the right structure to run their business. Then you decide what you're worth per person. Now I feel crazy because I was in the game 10 years before you. <laughs> I would be fabulous by now. You would. If I would have stayed in the game. Really? You stay I'd be, in the game. I'd be king of real estate. Golly. Yeah. So this is very interesting for entrepreneurs. Yeah. Because I don't have to have a brokerage, but I can make money. It's like really a business. Like It's almost like network marketing. It is. It's really a business. And if you look at it from a business standpoint, what do you do when you run a business? You create the platform, the system, and the structure. You create a platform, system, and structure that's duplicatable. So, it's, mm. so they can duplicate it. You can put as many people in this structure as you need. It's easy to duplicate and you know that it works. So your job as an agent before you become a broker or if you just want to be a broker owner, you got to put together like what's missing. Because I figured out what was missing, what agents actually need in comparison to what old school brokers were offering. What was missing? Systems. There was What was missing is I don't want to know. I don't want to have to cold call 100 people. Teach me how to get leads without cold calling 100 people. Teach me how to social media market. I don't need someone to just encourage me. I need someone to show me your scripts and your um, processes and how you onboarding clients and what are you saying? Like all of this is in my back end system. So I have two things that most workers don't offer. I have a Watson Realty Co. portal. And in that portal, it's like the intellectual property that I've collected over the years. They get mm -hmm. access to all of it. Like Georgia license law at your fingertips, handling buyer clients at your fingertips, what to do with a lease to own client, like step by step processes. You can't, you, it's plug and play. Yeah. And then the secondly is your marketing design center. I created a marketing design center because most people is like, we don't need to use Cam, but we have our own high level design center where you can send out mailers, you have your home buying guides, your home selling guides, development guides, things that you need in order to help grow your business. Mm -hmm. So those are things that we're missing and then take it from there. They want to actually have hands-on training. Mm -hmm. Like don't train me from what you figured out worked 2008. Train me what, for what's going on today. So we talk about the current market. Like right now our market's shifting. Yeah. It's shifting and it's shifting in a way where it's not, it's still a seller's market, but mm -hmm. it's shifting. Buyers are more finicky. Buyers are more mm -hmm. finicky and buyers are like, look, I am tired. I'm not paying you 30,000 for the basket. And my interest rate at 5% too? Mm -hmm. Nah, you gotta, you gotta educate me more. We gotta bring this down. And so I feel like this particular season is going to separate the freshman from the lobby. Mm -hmm. Like it's about to separate people. Cause a lot of people, if you got your license and you were pretty good, you were able to coast and do well these next two years. Mm -hmm. The next two years after this, it's gonna show who really got it. Do you ever get really good deals that come across your table? Yes, I do. you do. take and them I, yourself? 
this is one thing. If I get really good deals right now, especially with my development company I'm working on, if it's a land deal, I'm I, I'm not. It's mine. I got really. Two. Yes. I mean, at the end of the day, when you learn the game, you, everybody thinks agents get paid so much. Yeah. But imagine walking from the closing table and you get paid three percent of three hundred thousand, or you built the house and you get paid. Two hundred thousand. Give me an example of a good <laughs> deal, like and how did it come to you, and like what'd you do with it? So a great deal that came to us was when we bought the land on the top tax sale. So we're building two properties right now. You do tax sale deals? I've I've been doing all of this for years. I just think I don't. The fabulousness I think sometimes overshadows the work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, we bought me and my husband. We've been going to tax um, tax sales for five years, what? and we go south because that's where he's from. My husband's from Forsyth, Georgia, mm. and it's easier to get deals outside of the city of Atlanta. So you and he, his high school friends and all that, they work for the city down there. So mm. we get the list, we go through the list, and we we buy lands and we buy deals. Or we'll buy like a trailer, but the thing is not about the trailer. It's about having the land and knowing that it already has what connected power, a water source, things mm. that you don't have to go in, in infrastructure. You can yeah. just tear down the trailer and build up, which is what we did on um, one of the first properties we built. It was a trailer there, but it was easy to navigate because all the connections were already there. Give me some numbers on so this, this the, deal. The land itself cost us seventy five hundred dollars um, to build the property. And where was it at? It was in Forsyth, Georgia. Okay. Um, cost us seventy five hundred dollars. We got it at a tax sale, and that was the tax sale. We closed that in twenty seventeen. Okay. Um, and so after we got the land, we waited like a couple years, and we started to build on it. We built on it three years ago. Um, it took us about sixty thousand, sixty five thousand, give or take, to build the property. We sold it for two hundred and four thousand. Oh wow! Dang, you don't get none of that in Atlanta. I can say. You can. Atlanta has deals, but when you're starting out, start small. Because now that mm. we've started small, now I feel like I'm confident enough sure. to do a big deal because the cost of land costs much more. But the returns are greater in Atlanta too. So if you see some land in Atlanta, it's going to cost you maybe three hundred thousand in the city of Atlanta. But if you get the land for three hundred thousand, you have the right builders, the right suppliers, the right connectors. You can build the house for three hundred thousand, and then you can sell the house for one point four million. What? And you can make your money back. See, that's the point. That's why I. At this point in my career, I'm still selling, but like I said, I don't know how long because I'm really loving the development side. Mm. You take a bigger risk because what you're risking in the, as a developer is, am I building a product that five months from now when it's done, let's just say on average, really six months from now when the property is done, are we going to be in a market where they're going to pay this purchase price I need them to pay in order for me to make my profit? Listen, if I was going to teach you how to make a million dollars, would you give me 10000 like if I had a course teach you how to make a million dollars and you're positive, you're going to make a million dollars, would you give me 10000 Of course you would. It's no-brainer, right? So in a calendar year, we make seven figures with the podcast. But there's 21 things that I extracted from that that you're going to need to launch a podcast. But I only got time to give you three right now. One is you need a distribution platform. The distribution platform is what you upload your podcast to. That platform sends it to Spotify, Apple, Google Play, so that your supporters can actually listen to your podcast. You're also going to need a microphone. You need a really good microphone so it's crispy audio. And three, you need an income strategy. This is not necessarily a hobby, unless you're going to make it a hobby. But... I can teach you how I made the seven figures with these 21 things. Now, the good news is you don't have to give me 10,000. My ebook is only 37 bucks, okay? So listen, go to podcastebook.com and get the 21 things that you need. And I, I can explain it in detail, all the things that you need, okay? Podcastebook.com. Let's get to the episode. All right, so I, I want like a few acres because I want to build a commercial building. As you should. You got something for me? Yeah, Atlanta? In Atlanta? absolutely. But, uh, you know, hey, I need, absolutely. I need, I need you for the low, though. I need some equity, I though. have a couple of, like, wholesalers that send me deals. So I love wholesalers. I just know that they be, you know, they play around with the public because they'll tell y'all, <laughs> they, they play with these numbers. Like, mm. don't ever believe don't ever believe a wholesaler's numbers. Because if the deals <laughs> was that good, they would have kept it for themselves. Okay? But they don't be having the money, though. But they don't have the money. Mm. But if you if they, if they send you a deal and you look through it, you, just, you, are, you, you make sure you run your comps, run your numbers. But these wholesalers come across some really good deals. They come across some really good deals. Mm. And, if they, and if they don't have the money and you got the cash... You can close, like you got the money and you can close mm -hmm. in seven days. You can pretty much get what you want. 
You do you, uh, do you have you do more pro- commercial or residential? So my company, we do service commercial and residential. I'm not gonna lie, I've done some commercial. It's not my favorite thing to All do. Right. So I actually hired a commercial director to head up the commercial department at Watson mm. because she's been in the business for over 17 years. So what gotcha. I learned as a business owner, hire people that are smarter to, than you to head up departments that you're not that um, versed in. Gotcha. And I, I do gotta I gotta ask this too because. We are uh, we're recession time, yes. right? We all we all know. Why do you keep saying that? Because <laughs> man, because I want some good deals. No, I'm just playing. But what happens in these markets? Like, what 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 are you expecting to happen? What is the the conversation you're having? Maybe not even in your office, but with you and your husband. I can say, me and my husband, I feel like we are the best business partners. So mm-hmm. I I talk about all my business with him. Um, if you do business with me, know my husband, know what you said. <laughs> <laughs> I tell him everything. But one thing I can tell you for sure is what we're t- what we're discussing is lowering our overhead, keeping our our operations expenses low, mm-hmm. so that way we can see more profits. I think a lot of times we get so caught up in the hype of raising our operation expenses. Right? I'm getting. I just got a new office space for Watson Realty Co. It was necessary. You buy it or lease it? I, I had, I'm leasing it. It's in Buckhead. I'm leasing it now. But my plan is I have a three-year plan for the space because I know I want to buy something. But where I want to buy it at, that's the problem. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants to buy commercial, but there is whew, the prices are yeah. so high at the location. And it's a permanent decision. You have to decide where you want to be. Mm-hmm. So I'm leasing it. But even in that lease, you have to determine like what this market is going to look like. And am I going to have enough agents that are producing at the same level they're producing now to cover this expense? And so for me, I'm making smart decisions. I'm looking at the market. I'm watching companies. I read articles. I'm watching all these major real estate companies. EXP is completely virtual. They have no overhead. They have no Man. brick and mortar, right? But they stay at the top of the list when it comes to profitability, when it comes to real estate. Um, look at other companies like Keller Williams. They laid off 40% of their mortgage workforce. Um, Redfin Man. laid off, I want to say about 15, 20% of their re- workforce. And those are people they put in administrative roles to support agents because what they're doing, everybody is taking a step back. And they're replacing this with technology. AI is coming to replace people. Mm. So what I what I decide when I'm looking at growing my businesses is I want to grow steady. I don't want to shoot up and grow because mm. you don't know what this market is going to look like. And real estate to me, people will. I know, there's a group of people that they're gonna. It don't matter how bad the market is. There is a group of people that will always purchase and sell real estate because they see no value in renting. Mm. So it doesn't matter what's going on. They're gonna always purchase and sell, which is. Grateful to me, those are the clients that I serve. Yeah. So they already know the value of buying and selling real estate, which is another reason I stay in production. I stay in, I'm in production now because I spoke to a couple when of When you people. say production, what do you mean? I'm still, I still sell real estate. Gotcha. I yep. still yep. sell, the reason I still sell real estate is if the moment that I stop selling real estate, then my income is dependent upon my agents closing deals. Mm-hmm. I'm not ready to depend on them yet because mm-hmm. I, I'm a two-year-old company. Let me see what happens in five years. Yeah. So give me three more years and then I can see myself processing out of production because at that time, three years later, it's a five year old business. Now I can really look at our P&Ls and I can really see mm. the structure of the business. So that's what a lot of times, like I said, don't get caught up in the hype. Mm-hmm. A lot of you guys are moving too quickly and you're going to forget the core part of your business. And in my opinion, as this recession comes and a recession to me, it's just people are recessing from spending over inflate money on these overinflated items, yeah. right? Gas is higher, food is higher, rents are higher, mortgages are higher because interest rates are higher, right? So don't get caught up in thinking you're going to always close 30 deals. You might yeah. close 15. You may close 15 and that's yeah. you being at the top of your game. So if you're at the top of your game and you're closing 15 deals, what are those newbies are closing? And they don't have the book of business. Well, let me ask you, is like, the effect of a recession on real estate, is it just the fact that people are spending less or is it uh, tightening restrictions on lending and companies aren't giving money as freely? I can't say that. And let me tell you why. There are so many companies giving away free money now. All of a sudden, down payment assistance is coming back. Mm-hmm. When COVID first hit, we had the Georgia Dream um, down payment assistance program mm-hmm. in Atlanta, right? They shut that program down. Literally, they started running out of funds or they stopped funding as much. Now, every email I get is a new down payment assistance program. Mm -hmm. Um, I just got an email from a company and they want um, the agents from Watson Realty Co. to come out there. It's some new program. Uh, So it's a it's a home buying event that we're going to have in October. And he was like, yeah, we got this new grant. It's going to cover 100 percent financing. Can we get three of your agents to come? It's going to be 50 home buyers at the event. Of course. 
I can get three of my real estate agents yeah, to for come. Sure. You can invite it to the table. Exactly. You don't know so what's I, going on. So they, they invite us to the table because they know we're going to come. And I told mm. them not only that, like I'm not beyond it. I said, if, it, if the date works for me, I'm, I'll show up as well. Oh. So I'm going to show up because we still want to encourage people to buy properties. So there's more programs available now. Um, the grant program, the Chinoa grant program is coming back. Um, Bank of America just reannounced the program and just got a pretty bow on it, but it's the same program um and it's coming back so legacy homes another mortgage company they have a new 100 percent program specifically for nor- minority black people coming back shout out to ransom gems we're going to be interviewing them tonight about mm, that program so what i want to say is there is more money on the market for people to purchase property i think that we're in a shifting time where the sellers now have to they just gonna have to humble themselves they yeah. have been winning so much yeah. and being able to um bully these buyers and now it just has to be a win-win sure. and so what we're experiencing right now is a market correction i feel like by january we will be corrected well this is the way we do business now and then we're back to business as usual yeah. right now it's a huge sock shocker it's a shocker for buyers going from three percent interest rates to five percent interest rates that is a huge yeah. shocker if i'm a buyer right it's a shocker for a seller where their neighbor sold their house six months ago and their neighbor got 20 offers in 24 hours. And now you list your property at the same price, same features today. And you may have had three showings. You got one offer and it's not above asking price, but yeah. your neighbor sold 30000 above asking price. That's how quick the market has shifted. So when I say we're in the middle of a correction, we have to correct ourselves for this is where we are. When you're looking at any article I read, they are, there are no plans for the rates to go down. There are only plans for the interest rates to continue to rise. Mm. And I read I read an article. I forgot where it was. And if you notice, I'm always reading a real estate article because I'm really, I'm invested in this business, right? That said, they want their money back. When they flooded the streets with all this money from the PPPs, the whatever mm. they was giving out, from just business loans, all, the, all of that money, they want it back. And what's the best way to get your money back as a gov- government entity? Taxes. Taxes. Taxes and interest rates. That's why the rates are high. They want their money back and they're going to get it (laughs) back. And there's nothing that we are going to be able to do to stop it. And so we just have to change and move with the time. I got to ask this because it's something I didn't understand. I I don't understand. I was listening to Gary V. Love Gary V. Gary V said, y'all need to stop buying houses. Y'all need to just rent. I feel like I'm trying to understand where that's coming from. I think he says that from a lot of people say it from a place of ignorance. And I always say this, I'm not going to compare myself to a Gary Vee or even a Grant Cardone, right? Cause I ain't got a billion dollars. Right. They have a billion dollars. So why are you speaking to them? You got a hundred thousand. You need to be listening to your hundred thousand there people. Yeah. I think that we, t- I'm not about to take advice, life advice from someone that's living on a level that I'm not at. So right now you're giving me advice from a billionaire status, but I'm pretty sure you own your property. Right. So why are you telling me not to own something? Do you did you like do you understand why he's saying it? Because I, I still don't why. understand. Because he's probably shot. Because he's shopping in a different. He's coming from a different space. I'm mm. Gary V. My family been had money. Mm. I they, we own multiple properties throughout the United States. But right now I'm looking at the interest rates. They're higher. The prices are higher. I'm gonna tell these buyers they just need to rent. The comparison to that, rents are higher than mortgages right now. Mm. Rents are high, but they need to rent. They don't, you don't need any responsibility because we don't know what's going to happen in the market. So they're coming from a place of this market is shifting so much. Don't just rent because eventually you're going to be able to buy something because they're betting on the, the real estate in the industry plummeting. They're thinking that's yeah. going to happen, but there is no there are no numbers to support that. But this is like three years ago where I think his message wasn't like, don't buy right now. I think he's saying buying a house as a young entrepreneur is a bad idea. That's what he's saying. And I don't, I don't get that. That doesn't even make sense. The only reason it makes sense. The only reason it makes sense. And I'm going to tell you, because I'm a, I'm a home ownership, a home ownership advocate, but I have my client and she's like a huge example. She bought a house using down payment assistance from me six years ago. So she got the house basically where she only had to put a thousand dollars in. So she start, she on the internet, she following you, she following Neo, she following everybody. She ended up taking some class with Neo about event spaces. Mm-hmm. So she called me, Kiana. This was two years ago, Kiana. I want to sell my house. How much money can I make? I said, you can make a hundred thousand. I look at the numbers, right. you can make a hundred thousand. She all she did was buy it with a thousand dollars out of pocket, lived there with her family. And she said, I got a plan. I said, What's your plan? She said, My plan is to open an event space. She is a mobile notary now. 
I want to open an event space because she used to work for the airport mm-hmm. and you know, they weren't entrepreneurship definitely gives her some more compensation. Sure. Yeah. And she was like, I'm, I'm going to open up my own business. She said, do you think it's smart for me to open up this business? This is my projection. And I got my mobile notary and she started wholesaling. Word. And she said, I'm going to do this for a year and I'm going to come back and buy. I said, if you got a plan for this hundred thousand to build a business, to bring in an income, sell the house. We sold her house. She opened the event space. It's in Snellville. I know exactly where it mm-hmm. is. She does her mobile notary. I have her number and she's making money, but she keeps in touch with me. Shout out to Jewel. Jewel was like, and when I, when I even now, I'm going to come back and buy another house. Mm-hmm. I think that he's talking to people like that. So, she didn't take the hundred thousand and go to Chanel. She didn't take the hundred thousand and go yeah. to the mall. She invested in another business. And I think that from Gary B's standpoint is if you can get a book, if you have a bulk of money, and you want to, and you want to be an entrepreneur. Let me just start yeah, there. Yeah, for sure. Invest it into a business first. I think then that that and and even me advocating home ownership, I advocate for investing in businesses yeah. just as much. 100%. But if you are just working your nine to five and you have no other plans, and did you just see how the girl stayed there for six years and made a hundred thousand? Mm-hmm. You could have you could have stayed there for six years and said, I want to pull this money out and did a home equity line of credit. And pulled out eighty thousand and kept twenty thousand inside your Damn. equity, and still would have been to the good some additional money. That is the power of home ownership. So I still believe in it, but I also believe in business ownership as well. So I think that his mindset was because there's a lot of people now they don't want to work. Yeah. Yeah, 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 everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. So you have some money to invest in being an entrepreneur. Go for it. Yeah, and I think you're saying like as a homeowner, like things break, you got to take money and fix it and all that kind of stuff. That's ridiculous. Just to trying me. to, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a scare tactic. I have a home. I have a home warranty on my house. It's a home warranty. I, I pay a thousand dollars a year. Something break, I'm calling this home warranty mm-hmm. company to come to my house and make the correction mm-hmm. and pay them a fifty dollar trip charge. It's like having a landlord if you have a home warranty. So just don't let people scare you out of your right to home ownership because everybody is going to give you different advice. But I'm not taking advice from a multimillionaire, a billionaire <laughs> right, about right. my life advice when I know I got 50000 saved and I'm making 100000 a year. We're, we're, we're operating from two different yeah. mindsets. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, we're in two different mindsets and two different modes. And I, I just don't want you guys to get caught up in that. Like Grant Cardone told everybody not to buy a house. But he is posting his house that he's building, a beautiful, big, <laughs> multi-million dollar house where you can park a plane and uh, got a helicopter pad. <laughs> but he told y'all not to buy because if you can't, because he wants you to buy an apartment community. How many of you guys can call somebody right now and help you buy a $2 billion apartment community? The average mm. person doesn't have that type of network, right? So like, you're taking advice like. from people that are in a, in a different space that you're not in and you may never, ever be in that room, and that's okay. Take yeah. advice from people that are in the rooms that you're in. I definitely agree on ownership because yes. I think, yo, really? I think there's a certain pride in owning something. Absolutely. I think, like, there's the majority of people don't own anything. Like, you bought a car, but you still got the car note. You don't even own that. Like, it's... it's. I think it's. it comes down to this. And, okay, y'all going to be the first to know. I, <laughs> Let's I don't go. Know when this is going to Exclusives. Drop. This is exclusive. So, y'all, I'm from North Carolina. My family never owned anything. And when my dad um, passed away and my mom, I moved her to, I moved her here. She And I ended up renting her house around the corner from my house. I just bought her a house um, literally the day before Investfest. Wow. Um, I bought her a house, right? We renovated it. She just moved in. And now we have, a, we have a family house. Y'all, do you know how hard it is to be, I'm like the second oldest of six, got all these nieces and nephews, go home to North Carolina. We don't have a family house because my mom isn't there. Family house, explain that concept. And so a family house is this. My sister can live with my mom. My brother can live with my mom. You know how you're like, I can always go to my mom's house. We now have a family house. And I'm like, I'm going to work my ass off to get, make sure I pay this house off within the next three years. Cause I want her wow. to have a family house. And so it means a lot because now, no matter what, no matter what's going on in this world. And again, my mom has six kids now and we got a bunch of nieces and nephews. They can always go to grandmother's house and it's a permanent address oh my gosh. and it's a forever address. And that's just something that I see. I saw my friends have that. You know what I'm saying? I saw other people have that, and I never had that. We moved around a lot because, again, I grew up, you know, very poor. I never even heard of that. And so when you have a 
Think about that family <laughs> house. That's that's a different level of like, and it's not even about me owning the house with my husband. It's like, this is my family house. Now, instead of having Thanksgiving at my house, I want to have it at my mom's house because this is my mother's home and this is our mom's place. And so all my mm. sisters and brothers, we can come over here. And that's a different level of pride. And that's a different level of like, this is a big thing. And I don't think that Nobody thinks about it like that because we're too busy moving and moving and moving. But think about back in the day when you watch Soul Food, that was grandmother's yeah, house. And everybody sure. knew no matter what, I could come back to this house. Mm -hmm. That's the importance of home ownership because you're going to be a granddaddy, right? You're going to turn into, I'm going to be somebody's great auntie or grandma, or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But they're going to always know when it comes down to it, when it's the past along, this is that house with those memories, mm. with these old, like it, it's modern to us today, but 20 years from now, our house is going to be the old house. Mm. See what I mean? With the old memories and the old photos. And that's what the importance of home ownership means to me. Are you heavy? You can clap that up to the house. <laughs> Do you, uh, how, uh, do you have like a goal of acquiring real estate every year? Is it like, yo, I try to get X amount of properties per year or are you kind of in a saving pattern right now to do something special? I'm in a saving pattern right now to do something special. So I like I was like acquiring a certain number of properties every year. And now that I have the properties and their income flowing, I'm focused on the development portion of my business. So mm -hmm. there are like, there's some big deals on the tables. One 22 acres, one 10 acres. Um, me and my husband, we're focused on building community. So those, that's like where I'm at now. I'm shifting my gears a little bit. So I want to run my businesses and get into development because development changes a lot. Mm -hmm. It changes. If you can build what you know, the, what you know, people are looking for. Now you're providing the inventory. So, you know, you have the inventory, you're building it and you're selling it and I'm mm -hmm. listing it and I can serve you. So now I'm catching all sides. So right now, my focus is on the development portion and from mm. classes and mentorship and research. It's a different type of beast when you're building an entire infrastructure. Building a couple of houses is cool. We do, yeah. We're doing that. But get you 25 raw acres and build a whole new community. That mm. takes a different level of focus, work, and capital. Yeah. So I'm in that space right now where my capital is being, I'm, I'm building it up, saving it, and leveraging that capital to build more community. Gotcha. I, and I, I want to, yo, what's, first off, what do your husband do? Okay. Cause I see him in, <laughs> like, I see him in your fabulousness Look, videos, but he just be there. He just be like, <laughs> just he chilling. Never, he never really wanted to be out there like that, but my husband's had his trucking business, BHE, mm. International Trucking. Um, at one point, we had 20 trucks. What? Uh huh. Um, he had that now since 2007. He had, wow. Oh. So he's had his trucking business for quite some time. Um, but what he does now, he still has his trucking business, but we have leveled it out. Five strong drivers, dedicated lanes. Mm -hmm. When you have dedicated runs, dedicated lanes, you know you're guaranteed. Your drivers come home every weekend, mm -hmm. and that business has been doing great. Yeah. So now he, we and him partnered with WRC Development. We partner in on the building. So the first house that What's we built. What's WRC? Watson Realty Co. Development. Okay, I got you. Okay, I got so, you. Hold but, on real quick. It's your business. Yeah. And you part your your husband and your business partner. Another division. So Watson Realty Co. is the umbrella. Yeah. Now we have the development division, WRC Development. Yep. We came in as business partners. And let me tell you why. You know, the first house that we built, mm -hmm. like I told you guys, we bought it, tore the trailer down, built it. We sold it to one of his truck drivers. Mm -hmm. He built it and sold it to his truck driver. So my husband, that was our first build. And he heads up. I do the back end. I mean, y'all look at me. You know I'm... I'm not going to be out there in the work booths. I ain't going to be getting mm. too muddy, but I'm going to run the numbers. And I'm going to mm. make sure the systems are in place. Yeah. He's in the field, managing contractors, going through sub subcontractors, making sure that we know what we're doing. So he has the field part. I had the back end. So the most beautiful thing that I could have ever done for my relationship is recognize when I kept wanting to grow the trucking business. Mm. I'm like, look, we can grow it at this. I'm getting this government <laughs> contracting. Da, da, da. He was like, man, this is wearing me out. Like, mm. I, I, I like where it is. I want to get into construction. Mm -hmm. And as a wife, I listened. And so I just watched him. I said, okay, he built the first house, built the second one, mm -hmm. fourth one. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's come together and let's yeah. really go, like, let's make this a partnership. And it's the best thing I could have ever done. Um, yeah. Because he loves that part of it while still running his trucking business. You made more money than your husband? 
That's an interesting question. Very interesting. It's a very question. interesting question. I like to say we make money together. Good. Okay. That was um, a good answer. You we, pivoted around that question. That was good. <laughs> that was all right. We make, we make money together because we are a partnership because it, it's always been like that, you yeah. know? How'd y'all meet? Oh, Lord. So we were at Atlantic Station and I was valet in my car. You know where the 12 is at Atlantic yeah. Station? And they used to have this place called Bistro, the Cheesecake Bistro. There. So I was yeah, valeting. Oh, I used to love that place. Yeah, I, I was valeting my car to go on a date with somebody else, actually. <gasps> and uh, when I was valeting my car, he met. He was in the, like that little place in the middle, and he was like, "Oh, you know what you're doing?" Blah blah blah. I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm about to go on a date." Because at the time, I was I'm in savage mode. Like this is Kiana Watson, property manager. I don't need no man. I'm just dating y'all because mm. I'm no. <laughs> I'm that he met me was like I'm not dependent. Like I am running my life. Right. And um, I was like, I'm going on a date. He was like, oh, if you want to see you happy, you can come with me. I said, no, I can take your number. And when I finish this date, we can talk tomorrow. What? Yeah. Oh, oh. You were still outside. He was he like, was okay. I, outside, so I, I was he got his number and I went on my date, like I said. And then we circled back the next day and we actually end up uh, going on a date. First what did day. you like about that first approach? What did you like about? I liked about? the cockiness of the first approach. I yeah. did. I, I kind of liked it. It was like, you know, if you want to see you happy, you know, you need to come here. I'm like, a whole nother man want to see me, you be happy, me be happy with you. All right. I like, you should I, probably I, think I, about I, that line the whole day. Like, right. oh my, that is a line <laughs> like, right that there. That was a line. I was like, right, that, that was some cockiness. I, I enjoyed <laughs> that. But then our first date was, um, it was terrible, actually. Really? Mm -hmm. I cut him off the first day. Uh, we had to, he had to come back and. I like to call, and he, he, I tell this story all the time. He was caught up in, um, he was, a, my husband is from Forsyth, but he lived all his life basically being in Atlanta. I when, never, when was this? Give me time frame. This was, um, this was 2014. Okay. Keep in mind. Was you lit? I was already, yeah, I was lit. Yeah. I wasn't thinking that it was, it never was a big deal to me until I came to Atlanta. Brown skinned women, dark skinned women compared to light skinned women. We never had that in North Carolina. You was either you either looked good or you didn't. Mm. But when I came to Atlanta, it was this big colorism, mm. and I never I never experienced it. And so I went on a date with him, and he told me I was pretty to be dark skinned, <sighs> that my teeth was white and straight, <gasps> like my skin was clear. It's almost like he was talking to me like I shouldn't have been pretty to be. Like it was like, do you think this is a compliment? I wow. said, bruh, you darker than me. But beyond that, <laughs> and beyond that. You know, I was like, you know what? You you have a little colorism going on. You probably don't see it, but you do. Mm -hmm. And I cut him off. And I told him, I said, you know, and he, at the time, and we end up, he circled he circled back and met me in the mall. I re-met him again in the mall. Mm -hmm. He came with a different approach, and we went on a couple of dates, and it worked out. But wow. at the time, he was used to dating these mixed women and light-skinned women, and nothing against that. But I think that for him, I was like, I'm not, I'm not the second best. I am I am the best. Like mm. as I'm not pretty to be dark skin, I'm pretty because I am. Yeah. My teeth are white because they are. Mm. Like let's relax a little bit. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and after that, and wow. after having that conversation with him, he started to recognize like that's where I was. And I don't yeah. like I said, I never seen it, but yeah. it there's a lot of women that has told me they've experienced that in mm. Atlanta. But I think it's getting better now. But yeah. Then I was like, nah, you're not going to sum me. Like, right. tell me I'm pretty <laughs> <laughs> I have <Wow>. options. <laughs> I had an option when I met you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how long have you been married? Now it will be 10 years in uh, March of mm. 2022. So we're nine years today, 10 years coming up. Congratulations. Thank that you. is amazing. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. I think I'm going to say that to my wife, too. Like, hey, man, because we be role playing sometimes. <laughs> Don't do <Yeah>. that. <laughs> I think I was following her somewhere. I'll pull up and I was like, yo, what's up? What's your name? You know what I, mean? I think I'm going to use that. Yeah. No, yo, if your, your husband rip. Yeah, that's cool. No, I don't want to say that because if somebody else say it. It's a problem. It's a problem. <laughs> it's a problem. <laughs> Me saying it might remind her of like, that was a good line. Wow. Anyway. <laughs> Let me chill. Let me chill. Man, I, yo, I, this was, this was good. Did we miss anything? We talked a lot. What you got? You got a question? Yeah, go for it. Are we set up for questions on the mic? We're good. Go for it. Yeah, go ahead. We can do it. All right. So, nah, this is this this really really good. You are a true boss. You're not just fabulous. No. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I know. Uh, it overshadows. There was a young lady. There was a young lady at an event, and she was telling me she's in real estate, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, great. You know what I mean? But she's like, she's a, she was like a a voluptuous. Voluptuous is that the word? Where voluptuous. That's a word. 
No, I'm talking about like in shape, but like just boom and bow. Yeah, voluptuous. That's the word. And she was like, the first thing was like, hey, I watch the show. I'm like, thanks. And she's like, uh, I'm in real estate. Let me let me show you my Instagram. I'm like, all right. And actually, at my, my wife was at the event, too. And I'm like, yo, I don't even, I'm nervous this whole time. Because imagine I'm talking to this oh, woman. Know. She's built, right? She is built. And then my wife is down there, and I'm sitting there, and we exchanging phones and all I that. I am nervous. It's getting hot in there. I'm like, oh, my gosh, hurry up. And she shows me her Instagram. She's like, yo, it makes you follow me. And, like, her page is all that. It's like that. Mm-hmm. But I could, I can see that possibly... Maybe she's making money because of her followers or what she's showing. I can you tell feel you, me? it's such a. There's more of that let now. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you what's going on, and I'm gonna tell you. Let me tell you what's happening here. And I get it so much, and I have tested our market, and I keep testing it and testing it. It doesn't matter how much um, real estate I sell, if there is no social proof of me being involved in the real estate industry, mm. I might as well take real estate out of my bio and just put influencer. Mm. And I think that we all want that because sometimes I do, I'm like, dang, like I feel like all I'm doing is talking about real estate. Even when you reach out to me, yeah. I'm like, oh. but at the end of the day, is that who I am? Yes. Mm. And do I talk about real estate all the time? Yes. So my fabulousness is who I am. That's, that's part of me too. But if I'm using my social media page to, help people understand real estate to acquire clients, then I need to be showing what I'm doing, right? Yeah. And I think that a lot of us may just need to get a separate page. It's all about real estate and maybe use that. Because I can say that there are some people, especially of other races, and can I, and I don't think it's a racial thing, but when I'm going, I was in Vegas, right? So I go to this huge event. It's called Inman Connect Luxury Connect. And I'm mm. in the room with um, people that are selling $30 million deals, mm. not a year, a deal, right? It's luxury real estate connect, right? And you go to their pages and they're white people. And all you see is them hanging out with their dog, hanging Mm. out with their pals. They're not doing as much marketing as we're doing, but they are listing and selling $30 million houses. Mm. But for us as black people, and this is how I truly feel, we are still in a phase of life where we have to prove it. We have to show it and prove it because if you walked up to someone and said, I made a million dollars last year, there's a whole thing. You lying. Ain't no way. <laughs> People want, they, you know why? Because we're not used to seeing it. So yeah. what I recognize in not getting caught up in the hype is, let me just share more. I, I have, I, I do real estate every day. Let me just share it because yeah. I want that representation needs to be important. Yeah. So you can stop not believing that we're doing what we say we're really doing. Yeah. So let me just post these deals. And there are some closings that I can't post, but my name is in the room. Like you, like Dave, you can't walk in the room. Nobody, they're not going to say Kiana doesn't know what she's doing in yeah, real estate. They're going to say, oh, she a goat. She helped me buy and sell my house. And yeah. there are, we're in circles where people, you, you may know I work with them because they told you, but you know, you're not going to see the post, right? Did you ever feel that you had to work a little harder to get respected based yes. on how you present yourself and just yes. pretty and stuff like that? Absolutely. I think that even now my style is completely different. Um, what I recognize is I'm recognized as Kiana Watson, the real estate professional, whether I am actually in the selling real estate mode or not. Mm -hmm. And so me and my husband was laughing because we were looking at some old pictures 10 years ago. And I remember when he said something to me one time, I put on these shorts and he said something to me. He ain't like it. But at that time, you know, when they love you, they don't want you to wear certain things. (laughs) And he ain't like it. And I, we and him got into an argument. This was 10 years ago. We got an argument. I can wear what I want. But now when I actually leave out the house, I like to be stylish. Being stylish is one thing, but I don't lead with everything don't have to be tight. Everything doesn't have to be a certain way. And that's just because I recognize no matter where I am, I'm I'm still a representation of a black woman in real estate. And there's a specific look that society has kind of deemed that we should have. And we are it's going to take some years to unlearn that behavior. And I'm I'm certainly not trying to be the pioneer to take you completely Mm -hmm. out the box. But I do push the envelope a little bit to show, but guess what? Yeah, I was at this party last night and we had a great time and here we are today. Just close on three houses. Mm. Hi y'all, you know what I mean? And you have to do yeah. that and it kept, helps people to unlearn, like, okay, this person can have a life and can be a little bit sexy, but still share, mm. you know, who they are. So I, I try to defend the agents as much as possible because I do feel like we're put in a box, especially black agents. Mm. Because I can tell you for a fact, I can pull up their pages right now and show you some heavy hitters and they don't post houses. They post their families, they post themselves. Yeah. 
But for us, I feel like minorities, we just still in that space of social proof. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why you got this pot. We still Absolutely. need the social proof. Absolutely. And I think it's even a certain level of respect for if you are in a relationship. Oh, absolutely. Right? I just I just got to, it, 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 it gets ridiculous. So you yeah. still have to, I personally like to present myself a certain way. Yeah. But I have a certain style about myself that I just love. Like, I just love a classy, sexy style. Mm. You know, every once in a while, am I going to throw on a one-piece jumpsuit? Yeah. Maybe. But when I'm really, like, hanging out in that element, I'm probably not going to post it. Yeah. David has been at the parties with me. Oh, I'm a good time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, uh, I was like... Oh, I'm right. <laughs> I'm having a good ass time. Like yeah. I'm going to enjoy myself, but I am in a space of discernment. Like you have to decide. Like, does everybody deserve? If we're in a private room of thirty people and we all turning up, I want it to be a safe space. Mm -hmm. And in order for that to feel like a safe space, all thirty of us have to have an agreement to enjoy the moment. Mm -hmm. Put your damn phone down. Sure. Let me rap. Let me be little yeah. Kim in this moment. And she was little Kim. I'm talking about the song came on. And because normally I only see the stuff on Instagram, like she's kind of teaching the game, ran some gist. She turned all the way up. And I'm like, that's my dog now. Like, I'm cool as hell. But I, I know that I ain't posting that. And I want and I want enough respect yeah. to people in the room to know that that we're gonna just have this good time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those are the vibes I give off. And I yeah. think that we all need to do that when we're in this world of so, social proof and representation and it's okay to show a little bit but i'm not yeah. about to show you my whole hand so if i'm wearing right. a bikini like i do draw the line at bikini shots right. i used to early um like seven years ago i posted this bathing suit picture mm -hmm. and it went viral on everywhere facebook it just it was bad it was like it wasn't bad but it was bad and mm -hmm. i was like you know what now if i do post something i have a cover-up and i'm always posting if i do post while i'm on the beach and I have a cover up. I'm normally in yeah. a picture with my husband just to bring it down a little bit because I just don't want you here for that. Yeah, you know what sure. I'm saying? Like, I do believe in I women's rights and do what you want, but it makes me yeah. more comfortable in my marriage. It makes me more comfortable as a woman. So most of the time, if I'm on the beach, y'all never really see me on yeah. the beach. You just see, oh, she got that outfit on because yeah. she going out tonight. If I'm on the beach hanging out, I just don't feel the need. For sure. And that's why those rooms are protected. Like you yes. find, like, it, like you, there's certain rooms that exist that maybe, I don't know if you're listening to this, you haven't like seen it or been invited, but. There are rooms that we are in and it, they're oh, fun. Yeah. We, we can let our yeah. hair down. Mm -hmm. You know how hard because it is. Everybody to, is doing something. Yes. You, everybody has receipts. Everybody, no, it's no hate. That's why you gotta be conscious of the people that you're around, man. Yeah. And, it, and it, it's encouraging. Like we literally mm -hmm. can go in that room and we know everybody is doing what they say yeah. they're going to do. We can, but this is our time to really enjoy ourselves. And we're, you don't have to be Dave, the Oprah yeah. of interviewer, right? You can just <laughs> chill. Yeah. I don't have to be Kiana, the real estate guru. I can mm -hmm. literally chill. And mm -hmm. we, we deserve that. And you need that safe space. hundred percent. Two things. Go win and be cool. Be a cool person oh, yeah. and go win. You'll be invited to the table. The, yeah. Please be cool. Relax. Yeah. Cause I think some people get caught up. I have some people walk up to me. I had a girl Lily, what was walking past me the other day. I was at a restaurant. Um, we took um, Tanaya, which is my husband's daughter, my daughter, and we took her out. She turned 21. So we took her to have her first drink, supposedly. Mm. Like, I didn't lie. <laughs> supposedly. And it was because then she drank that champagne like she right. knew. So shout out to Tanaya. Shout out to Tanaya. And um, a girl was behind me and she was walking past. It's like, oh my gosh, you look so nice. I was like, thank you. And she said, I ain't going to be that person. I was like, what? She said, I know exactly who you are. And da da da. And I'm so inspired. And I was like, what's your name? What's your Instagram? And I start talking to her. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, please don't be that person. If you want to take a photo, we can take a photo, yeah. sis. What you what you want to do? Mm -hmm. And we just start talking. And she was telling me a lot that she had going on. And then we kind of ended the conversation. I'm that person. Yeah. Like, just say something. It's, it's okay. And if you want a picture, just say something. Please just don't take the Like, I, I have had people literally, I ain't going to lie. Like, this is, I be talking to like, like, don't do that. Don't do that. Like, please get like I had, I literally was mid conversation. Someone just put a camera in my face and just took pictures like that when I was in London. Didn't even ask. I like like let's not be like that. I am not Beyonce. <laughs> you can just say, "Hey, sis, right. I want a picture." All right, so good. Let me just get my hair together. Right. Let me make sure my lace is laid. Can I put some lip gloss on? Let's take the photo together. It's cool. It's not a problem. Like I'm a cool yeah. ass person. Um, I'm I was about a my life business, flex too. I was in life, London. Y'all like, caught the light flex? <laughs> that was a light flex. I was in London. People taking I was pictures. In just London, little, 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 you know what I mean? <laughs> Internationally known. Uh, but just kind of letting you know, like, yeah, you gotta, yeah. there gotta be safe spaces, but you also gotta be true to who you are as a person. Like, don't, again, like what I say, don't get caught up in the hype. That's a fact. Good. Jay, what you got? 
Oh, I had one question. Um, I wanted to know what's the hardest problem or the biggest ill you feel like you've taken as an entrepreneur, and what did you do to bounce back from that? Um, that's a. I have so many ills. <laughs> <laughs> what? I have so many ills. Um, let me. What is the biggest? The biggest ill. I feel like I'm experiencing it right now. Mm. The biggest L that I'm experiencing right now, and it's it's an L of, I feel like I spent a better part of this year focusing on just building up my businesses. And at some point, people were forgetting that I actually sell real estate and I actually do run my jo job. Mm. Like I do do real estate. Like you can call me and list your property or sell your property with myself or my team. And I think people started to celebritize me so much that they forgot that that the core of it is, wait a minute, she really do close houses. Mm. She really do pick up the phone and speak to her clients. And then I look back and David actually posted something um, two weeks ago, something like that. And I said, damn, guess what he said? He said something like, how you say you're a real estate agent and you don't post no houses. And then I looked back at my page and I said, okay, I, I am closing some deals I can't post. And I do be with clients that are real private. It's funny. It's, it's real finicky in our business. And I said, I'm not even posting inventory like I used to. This looks mm. like the girl living on, living the life. This is a lifestyle page now. <laughs> <laughs> and I said to myself, damn. And I, in August, every month, like every month since, tw since I went hard and, and re-came back in the market in 2016, I've, I've had at least three to four closings a month. Wow. I had one closing on the book for August. And that shit was pushed back. Mm. And I had no closings last month. And to, to me, it hit me like a bag of rocks. And I had to call my mentors and call other people. And business is doing great, right? Yeah. You know, I have other companies that are bringing in income. But for me personally, I said, that's an L. What mm. you doing different, Kiana? And I looked at myself. I said, you, you getting caught up in the hype. Because mm. at the core of you, like, yeah, you want to be fabulous. So post your fabulous photos, but you can post the information you know about real estate. You can post those houses that you went to go tour. You can let people know that you're available to service them. So the whole, I got a whole new rollout coming right now. I'm new marketing. Nice. All my marketing is houses. My marketing is talking to clients. I'm actually doing Q&As about real estate because I recognize there was no closing in August because of what I did June, for what I did June and July. June and July, there was no real estate being posted mm. and I was closing deals. Was there, was closing no, yeah. I, there was no real estate being posted. There was no education being sent out there. So my biggest L literally just happened and it happened because of me. And it happens when you get caught up in the hype. And if you're ready to hang up the hat and move on to that next phase, then allow it to happen organically. But mm. if you're not ready to hang up the hat and move on to that next phase, which with the market shifting, like I said, and me being a business person, a numbers person, I know no matter what, I can sell. I can sell some real estate. Yeah. I mean, and even still, slight flex. I've already sold fourteen million this year. So it's not like I have didn't sell it, but I've stopped <laughs> talking about it, mm -hmm. and I stopped talking about it and closed zero damn deals in August. And yeah. that has to. So I'm in a. I'm in a space of reversing that because I'm not caught up in the hype. Yeah. I just stopped posting it, yeah. and I started getting clients. Was like I had to figure out a better way to t show it because yeah. I'm literally with clients like sign this NDA, don't post this, don't post that. Like the biggest deals of my career have been deals that I can't even talk about. Mm. It's the craziest thing. So what can I do to show my value? And I had to rethink it. And when you posted that, it made me think about it. And with you posting that, and then me not having a closing, not one like <laughs> you felt attacked. No, no closing. <laughs> Okay, not one deal closed in my name. The company closing deals. I, I'm writing commission checks For out. Sure. But me, mm -hmm. no deal. I felt attacked. <laughs> and I had to re-strategize. And I think that that's a point of advice for anyone that's in business, that's scaling businesses. Don't allow what everybody's like, Kiana, you can sell hair. Kiana, you can sell clothes. Kiana, mm -hmm. you could be a model. I got, you know, companies reaching out for me to be out. Now, I, I do the big companies. I did, Yo, you know, sure. Ashley Furniture, all those companies. Yeah, if you see me, Turned I'm, no bags they, they, they paying. <laughs> but I could be an influencer, but don't forget the core of who you are and what you mm -hmm. do. Like, that's like you all of a sudden and saying, I, I'm... Sick of, I'm sick of podcasting. You see who I am? I'm the Oprah of the of podcasting. <laughs> and you just stop talk, you just stop talking mm. to people. Instead of talking with people, you start talking at them. Mm. And when you do that, you lose. Yeah. That's my biggest loss. So don't do that. Like stop talking at people about who you are. Show them what you do and who you are through social proof. Yes.
Oh, I love that drop. Run that as a hat. Mm-hmm. Right, <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh-huh. Um, I have a follow up to go with the answer you just gave. So you had, you, you said you have a rollout um, coming out, basically to start putting yourself back out there. Right. And I actually can relate to that because I feel like um, I'm a designer. So August, I had got a client um, for like 8,500. Um, and then I didn't, well, actually it was like the last week of July, August. I really just feel like I was not doing what I needed to do. Basically, Correct. I didn't get any orders for my brand last month. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like, like basically what you just said. And so now I'm trying to figure out, okay, what all do I want to do to um, bring the clients back in? So what talk is the with them. rollout? I would say talk with them. Um, I have new videos coming out. I just posted one today. I sat and did a million reels, right? Um, with my with my videographer and all I'm doing is talking about real estate. I'm talking about real estate advice. I'm giving advice. I'm going live and I'm doing Q&A's and I'm not doing Q&A's for people that want to learn real estate. I teach real estate. I have those platforms. I'm doing Q&A's for people that want to purchase and sell real estate. I just did the recent, a recent market report. I was doing market updates every single month up until mm. June. <laughs> <laughs> I being got, lit. And oh, I, I yes. just being lit, right? <laughs> so I just did a real estate market update, which is why I was like, I know how much inventory is on the market, right? So you have to um let remind people of who you are and remember you're on, you're not as good as your your last hit. You actually got to remind people of what your last hit was every single chance you get. Like this, to me, social media and social proof is like a commercial. And every single day, you got to run a commercial and an ad reminding people of your value and how much value you can bring to them. And so you need to roll out your value proposition. I don't care if you posted that dress that you made a month ago. Post it again and remind us of what you went through Mm -hmm. to make that dress. Show us some behind the scenes of you putting that, getting that dress together. Remind people that you want to get more clients and expand us on what else you can offer that is how you continuously engage an audience i love it good stuff good stuff look man we are going to wrap this thing up this is uh, this is a very well-rounded conversation again most episodes are like an hour it's like an hour and a half so this oh, must have been really we must have been going well <laughs> yeah, yeah we got yeah we got like <laughs> and i think we missed some stuff i think we missed some stuff um, which means we're gonna have to have a part two okay part two we're gonna have fine. to we didn't do an event here i think Oh, I could, I could see it. For home buyers or something like that. Can we that? do that? Because I love the event space. This is yeah. nice. Thank you. This I is nice. I, I can see us doing an event here. I can. And I, I'm going, I'm going to hold you to it. Yeah, say less. And the reason Let's I'm going to hold you to it is because we need to not just do a home buying event. Most people forget. I've been focusing on doing home seller events. If you so, if you're going to sell your home for the first time. You don't know what you're doing and you don't know what to expect. The same like you buy your home for the first time. All right. How long is it going to take me to get my license back? It's just paperwork. Word. It's just paperwork. And now if you're behind in CE classes, you can go online right now, shout, you know, because of everything. You could do your CE classes in a weekend if you focus. Okay, we could get my license real quick. I hang it with yeah. Watson well, Realty. We do a little home seller event and I can sell some homes. Yes, you can. Please, let's do it. You out here buying all but can the I have a Can I have an agent? Can I want to get like partner with an agent and they do of the course, agent let me stuff? Tell you something. We have plenty of associate agents that are ready and willing to assist oh, you. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> Rose, you hear that? I'm that, I'm in real estate, baby. Like all like, the way like, in. Get into real estate all the way in it. <laughs> all the way in it. But yeah, definitely. Um, I think that we, we didn't miss much. We talked yeah. about everything. You guys, I'm all about selling real estate. Mm-hmm. I teach about real estate, but I teach people through my wins and my losses. And my mm-hmm. loss may not be a loss for most. It's, you know, humbly speaking, yeah. it's like, oh, I sold 14 million and still took off two months. Yeah. I'm, but I'm sad about that for month. Sure. I'm not having a closing because it shows you just how quick, like, did I say it? It's, everything is in a cycle, how quick mm-hmm. you can be that one person. But if you don't remind people of who you are, you can just become the other person. And I become Kiana, the CEO. Yeah. I, you know what I wanted to touch on, and uh, like I, just, I got a two o'clock appointment, it's two o'clock now, but I, I wanted to touch on your, um, and maybe we'll save it for, I just want to put it out there okay. and we'll talk about it and maybe we'll save it for next time, but going from you being a top producing agent yourself and then having six agents to 30, some 34, Oh yeah, uh-huh. that's that's quite a transition. It is. So we're going to talk about that. Yes, but we got, we got to do a part two. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. <laughs> so um, one, uh, I got to do a quick commercial. Then I'm going to ask you one more question. Then we'll close out, okay? Okay. This episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup, themorningmeetup.com. Do you know about The Morning Meetup? First off, you haven't even been on The Morning Meetup yet. Well, I see you talk about it all the time. 
That's one thing I can say. You're yeah. good at reminding us of what oh, you got 100%. going on. And then he give you just enough information where you kind of want to join because you're like, <laughs> what the hell are they talking about? And your comments be lit. Yo, I need... So this month we're talking about how to make money. And okay. so can you be a speaker to teach? It's like hundreds of people on the call every single I'm, morning. I'm sure. I'll do it. Yes. Especially it's the morning meetup and it's, and it's not a video meetup. It ain't. I ain't got to put my lashes on at eight in the morning. We could just jump on with my coffee. Let's go. It's a Zoom call. I'm on it. All right. So... I mean, I, I like to be visual, so we... I don't okay, good, good. <laughs> so, um, yes, I'm just going to tell y'all, join the morning meetup. We meet every single day, morning, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and we talk all things entrepreneurship. It's a dope community. Community is the biggest part. Not even the information, but we get together. They connect. We have a book club. We all read together, so we're going oh, together. Yeah. Let me say one thing about David. I, I, why, I What I like about you is not only do you build community, you're consistent. That consistency... Um, it's admirable. Yeah. I can only imagine. Yeah, on the wall, consistency is the only cheat code. You'll see it on the other side. Mm -hmm. That is the core message of everything we do. Consistency is the only cheat code. I agree. And you've been consistent. I agree. If I've been consistent, then I'd have been at my brokerage. <laughs> you know what I mean? In real estate. You've been gracious. at it. Right. Let me ask you this question. Last thing. Um, I want to know, I like to do predictions on the podcast. Where do you see yourself in the next five years or accomplishing in the next five years? And the reason I'm asking is I want to hear you say something that you're going to do today and then watch this podcast five years from today. And I can say, yo, Kiana, Ben said she was going to do that. What I can see myself doing in five years, I'm going to develop a mixed use community mm. and it's going to include commercial and residential. Okay. There will be a couple of restaurants mm. and um, some businesses. I see how many acres at least at least 30 acres Ooh, okay mm -hmm. so listen Kiana you know you said it now so the clock started I've, the clock already started for me internally let's go so I don't mind sharing one thing that's why I've always I share my I share my story because I know I'm, everything I say I'm gonna do I do I stand mm. behind that mm. come on get that round of applause y'all <laughs> Look, man, uh, thank you so much, Kiana. Um, please, you got to take us out with a um, uh, let everybody know how they can find you, how they can support you, how they can work with you. Okay. And, uh, and then you got to take us out with a word of wisdom, okay? We got to sure. put a bow on this whole conversation. So how can they find you? Okay, you can find me at Kiana Watson. Everything is Kiana Watson. KianaWatson.com is my website. Kiana Watson on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Everything is the same, right? Mm -hmm. And I do tweet some a couple of thoughts, so y'all might want to catch me over there. Um, <laughs> and and you also, I have training classes for real estate. I have a, a, a challenge coming out. If anyone's interested in that, learning more about making huge profits in real estate, you can go to the website, hugeprofitsinrealestate.com. The link is also in my social media bio. And one word of wisdom I want to give people is allow, let, don't ever forget what your main thing is. You know, you, your main attraction, whatever that main attraction is for you, don't ever lose it. You know, Oprah has been in business for years and she still does her own interviews. Yep. You know why? Because she is the main attraction. So what I've learned and what I want us to know as entrepreneurs, you can do a, You can have a million other businesses, but whatever your main attraction is, don't let that go. I love it. Listen, we can't close it out no better than that, man. Make sure y'all do yourself a favor. Rock with Kiana. Support Kiana. Make sure you're following Kiana. And secondly, go get you some social proof, meaning go build something. Build it big. Remember how you built it so you can go back to your community and teach somebody else how you did it. It's the only way our community grows. Okay? We are out of here. Peace. All right, peace. Great job. Great job. Thank you.